All right, welcome back to <clears throat> another Let's Play Sierra Games. This time we're going to be going over Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. Uh, if you watched my channel updates, you know that in total, all six chapters ran 14 hours long. I did try to compress them down into one file, similar to what I did with Lighthouse. Lighthouse was, I believe, 10 hours, and I think Gabriel Knight 1 ran 11 hours. Uh, but apparently 14 hours is the point where my renderer will not go, because it would get about to 98% and it would crash. I tried it when I had the multiple files, you know, like as I was capturing, it was creating multiple files. Then I did it by chapters, thinking if I just do six files to render 14 hours, it would go through. It did not. It also crashed at 98%. So there is something at reaching that maximum capacity of uh, 14 hours is just too much for this poor computer to try to render a 14 hour movie in 1080p. Uh, so what I, ended up, what I ended up doing is just breaking them down into uh, individual chapters. But for this uh, commentary version, what I did is I basically took all six chapters and then sped them up so that uh, it was originally three hours when I sped it up and then I sped it up again to make it just an hour long. So. We will talk about Gabriel Knight for hopefully uh, either an hour or less than an hour if there's portions that I do speed up if I don't really have a lot to say. So the story basically is that Gabriel Knight is in Germany uh, at his uh, Ritter castle and uh, some people approach him and say, hey, something attacked my daughter and took her away. We believe it was a werewolf. So before we get into it, please click like and subscribe because that is the only way to be saved from getting lycanthropy yourself. So like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff, and we'll make sure you don't get any lycanthropy. But that said, we start off and Gabe has learned that some wolves have escaped from the zoo. So could it be a werewolf or could it be these wolves? So you head to the zoo, and I'll say this, the map when Gabe travels, because he is in Germany, everything is in German, so you, it doesn't say like zoo or police station or anything like that. You just kind of go to it and figure out, okay, that is zoo, which I thought was kind of cool. Kind of a pain when you're trying to remember what's what, but uh, after a few tries, you start to figure out what is what. Um, but he goes to the zoo and he meets uh, Tomas, I believe his name is, and uh, Tomas will not let him see the wolves. And something that Gabe has in Gabe Light 2, I believe in Gabe Light 1, he also has the tape recorder. But in Gabe Light 2, he has a double deck where you can actually splice and dice tapes, which is something that you'll have to do in Gabriel Knight 2 uh, to get by a few things. And then so this is pretty much Gabe's lawyer, I guess you could say, who man helps manage everything that Gabe deals with. And so through him, you can get a number of information and also like basically change your cash to German cash and all that fun stuff. Um, he, I, this guy's uh, voice and accent that Gabe speaks with, I, I thought it was great. He did such a great job. He's a very smiley and very charismatic individual. So Gabe goes back to the zoo, and then uh, you can talk to the guy who basically runs the zoo. And if you click around, you see he's quite interested in wolves. I will say this. Uh, I haven't gotten to Gabriel Knight. Ooh, Gabriel Knight 3 might be another long game where I might run into that issue of it being too long to render now that I think about it. Um, because there's so much story that I like to basically explore everything. So there is parts, for example, I'm going to lose track of what I was originally going to talk about. But there's parts, for example, in Gabriel Knight 2 where you pick up a letter. And if you click the letter, it'll actually read it in whoever's voice. So, for example, if Grace sends a letter to Gabe, uh, it'll be read in grace's voice so rather than just me speed reading through what it says i actually click it let it play and i do the same thing like if gabe writes a note and then he looks at it or if gabe gets a note from someone else and he reads it in his voice i basically have the actors read as much as uh, is provided in the game and uh so that does make it a little bit longer versus me just reading it that i mean what's that probably like maybe uh the number of notes and things that you find throughout the game that probably adds probably a half an hour to the game. Um, but I, <laughs> what I was originally going to talk about before I sidetracked, uh, 
similar similar to Gabriel Knight 3, um, if you've played Gabriel Knight 3 and you know about the cat mustache, uh, if, if you've played Gabriel Knight 3 and I say cat, cat mustache, you're probably nodding your head, understanding exactly what I am talking about. Um, there is a part in this game where uh, Grace captures a pigeon and kind of wraps it up in, uh, I believe it's a newspaper or something, or a towel. And then she puts it in her shirt. And then she proceeds to walk around several places, namely a museum, uh, with this pigeon inside of her shirt, and no one takes notice, and this pigeon never takes flight, never does anything. Um, overall, you know, if you take take aside that, you know, I accept that in this world of Gabriel Knight, there is lycanthropy, there is werewolves, and that stuff. It's, you know, obviously that dips outside of, uh, you know, realism, if you will. But it's weird that, you know, like, okay, I'm playing this game, I can accept that there are werewolves, but as soon as Grace put this pigeon down her jacket, <laughs> it totally, uh, totally broke the moment for me. Like, okay, she's just going to walk around with these pigeons and no one's going to notice. And then this puzzle here I thought was kind of odd where because it's uh, written backwards, Gabe couldn't read it. So Gabe actually had to go up to a mirror and read it. Like when you look at it, you can literally just look at the words backwards and easily read it. So that was an odd puzzle also where, you know, Gabe couldn't just look at the words and just read it backwards. No, he has to hold it up to a mirror so it is backwards and then he can read it properly. So there are odd things like that in the game that are uh, unusual for the puzzles. And this individual here, who is the guy who basically guards the, uh, the hunters thing, he's pretty funny because he and Gabe go back and forth quite a bit uh, with some dialogue. <laughs> and he clearly does not like Gabe. So he basically um, tells Gabe that he has to prove that he comes from a wealthy family. So Gabe goes back to his uh, lawyer contact and uh, gets paperwork about his lineage and comes back. And he meets this very attractive man. And this is how he gets into the hunting club. And naturally there's always one guy who simply will not like anyone new. That guy will be quite a problem. And so every other chapter it switches between the characters, as I said earlier. Like every odd chapter, so 1, 3, and 5 is Gabriel. And 2, 4 uh, is Grace. And first half of 6 is Grace, but then it switches over to Gabriel on chapter 6. But uh, Grace gets in here, and I thought this was actually kind of cool. Uh, it reminded me very much of... Um, King's Quest in a way that now we have this cool female who is taking the lead and <laughs> her and Grace's assistant who is a very beautiful woman by the way uh, they don't get along because Grace assumes that um, Gabe and her have hooked up and despite Grace's denial she clearly has feelings for Gabe so Grace has now uh, come to Germany if that wasn't clear, to find out what's going on with Gabe, because she's not really heard from him. He's been keeping busy. So, you'll move around through Riddersburg and a few different areas as they become unlocked here in Germany. This guy is actually pretty fun. He has a ton of information about the um, lore of the general area. And this is the bartender who first takes everyone up to Gabriel's castle so he clearly has information but he won't give it to grace as to what is going on with gabe and if you look every once in a while you'll see a picture off to the side right there for example um that if you click on you'll get more information about some of the things in the area so gabriel knight 2 uh because it is literally a point and click it's not a typing game um has a ton of stuff if you mouse over and click on a lot of different things in here you can get a lot of lore, which uh, Jane Jensen is uh, really good at providing. This part here reminded me very much um, when she was descending, not here, but when she's first descending down the stairs, reminded me of the scene in Phantasmagoria. 
where she's escaping the entity and she's running through uh, dark caverns. And here, Grace and the girl are being catty again. And this, like I said, uh, there is a ton of lore here. And the way this works is you have to keep going between the books and clicking the books and you'll find the different lore. But as I said, this is where, you know, I probably could have sped right through this and done it faster. Uh, but I liked having the actual actors reading the uh, lines that are being provided. So once you've found a good amount of information, you can actually sit at that desk and write Gabe back and let him know things that you found. And there are those, uh, just pass it a second ago, but there are those lilies next to the church. Uh, eventually when you go there, um, they will be opened and bloomed. And there'll be a reason that they open and bloom at that point. So this is the dungeon where the first werewolf was kept or not the first werewolf but one of the werewolves in the Riddisburg area that we saw in the intro and basically just like every other Sierra game anytime you find something new like revisit all the areas because it may have changed something so as Grace uncovers things, definitely go back and talk to the other people and see if they have new information based on things that Grace has uncovered. And same for Gabe, you know, just like the first Gabriel Knight. Every time you found something new, go talk to everyone all over again because they may have something for you. And with that, Grace found enough information to basically send a book that she found as well as a letter to Gabriel about lycanthropy. Because he's not staying at his castle, he's actually staying at the home of the parents of the victim that we saw in the intro where the child was taken. And be sure to always go back and then uh, check for letters. These two were great. The, uh, I guess you could call her a psychic, and her husband. Uh, they were pretty fun. She, uh, she has a number of appearances, um, and right there a moment ago, we saw Gabe having a dream, there was a swan. The swan will come into play later on. Um, may not make sense there, but like I said, the swan and the lily thing will come into play later on. I thought uh, Dean Erickson, who plays Gabriel Knight, did a really fantastic job. Um, although these days, if you talk to Dean Erickson, for example, he has a Facebook page, he does not like to talk about his time uh, during Gabriel Knight. Uh, he says, you know, it's part of his past, what's done is done. Um, he's focused on his future and his writing and stuff like that, which is a shame because a lot of people who, um, you know, got to know of Dean Erickson through this game, you know, are probably fans that would love to ask him questions about what it was like to work these, these people, you know, what was it like working in the, this story, it was so big, so popular, but uh, it's just not his thing anymore. So we see that there was a murder, and when you try to talk to the officer in charge, he won't listen, so you threaten to talk to the media, and then he comes and tells you not to talk to the media, and if he, if Gabe actually has information, to actually meet him. Now, I will say the, um, <laughs> what you use that cuckoo clock for is really weird. It's a stretch. But, uh, you know, in a game where there's lycanthropy, I guess it's not too much of a stretch. But uh, it was an unusual puzzle also. There's a number of unusual puzzles now that I'm thinking about it. As I'm talking about the game, there's a number of weird puzzles in this game that uh, stretch the imagination, if you will, beyond just lycanthropy. This officer um, continues to play a part in the series. 
he will show up in the final chapter in chapter six as well because he too is invited to the play or i'm sorry not the play the opera So this is, uh, we're right near, or I thought we were, because I saw the tree. Because um, that's right near, right where the cuckoo clock thing is. So now it's Gabe's turn to read the lore that Grace found. I do like some of the lore that they did put in here that is not typical werewolf lore, or at least not typical werewolf lore that I'm aware of where the alpha cannot hurt the beta or else it hurts the alpha as well. And this comes into play when Gabe and the attractive leader, him, <laughs> go hunting for uh, one of their own members who is uh, infected with lycanthropy. You put the cuckoo clock and go back to the front because what it does is it wraps on the door and he goes to see if someone's at the back door and this gives Gabe enough time to basically go around the counter get the key and then go down into the other area rinse repeat to put the key back but that door is now unlocked to go down there and see a number of different hunting trophies and stuff like that before he gets caught by the one guy who hates Gabe and says that Gabe is snooping around where he shouldn't be. I will say uh, the, that guy there, um, not obviously not Gabriel, but the uh, uh, other individual, Peter Van Glauer, I believe his name is. <clears throat> not his real name, I believe that's the character's name. Totally forgetting. Um, if you are familiar with the X-Men, and if you know who Mastermind is from the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, uh, in his illusion form as Jason Wagner, he would be perfect. Uh, I thought this was cool that Gabe, not only here, gets to start talking to some of the club members, uh, but there'll be another portion later on where Gabe is invited and they're all about to take off and he's able to talk to everyone. And it's cool that everyone has like a little bit of a backstory as to who they are, what they've done, and stuff like that. That is something that the Gabriel Knight series is excellent for, is just filling it with so much lore and content. So here's where you get to talk to everyone else and learn a little bit more about everyone. And then you'll find out even more when you go to the hunting lodge with them and speak with each of them individually there as well. And you'll find out the guy who dislikes Gabriel really, really, really dislikes Gabriel. And then we cut to chapter four with Grace, and she's having a dream being chased by wolves, but she's saved by someone on a sleigh. The sleigh will be important because Grace will see it later in a museum. And who that sleigh belongs to is also important. I love that Grace is concerned about Gabriel, and that's why she came to Germany. But then Gabriel's just trying to throw her off and tell her to investigate, like, non-legitimate leads, but actually they lead to something. <laughs> and here's the psychic again. She, like I said, she does such a great job. Her voice and her acting is so good. I don't even believe in psychics, but I would get a reading from her just because she's so fun to talk to. <laughs> I 
once again, keep checking on those lilies and keep note that she had that heart that she put down there. And this is one of the changing points soon for Grace to realize that Gabe's assistant is not in love with Gabe, but rather she was in love with someone else. And it'd be none other than, if you've played or watched my playthrough of Gabriel Knight 1, it'd be Wolfgang. So. It's interesting, the first time you find this passageway that leads down into the roses, if you click the roses, she'll just sniff at them or comment on them. Uh, like, oh, this is probably where they get the roses to give to, you know, whoever. But after Grace spots her at the um, church where the, uh, the Gabe's uh, family line basically has like a little tomb, if you will, um, that's where they start making events. Now, in this museum, I was thrown off and literally probably spent an extra half an hour to an hour because of the way this museum is laid out. There is a wall that there where I was looking at that I thought was the wall that you see also off to the side and when you turn around, but there's actually another wall that you have to read uh, that specifically talks about the diaries uh, to get more information out of the person behind the front desk. So that wall and that wall that we saw just a moment ago, I thought they were the same wall. So, and that wall there, well, not this one, but the wall that's right there. So there was literally a time, and if you don't get this information from this this clerk here, um, it doesn't unlock the other museum that's to the north. Uh, so literally I was spinning, going to different museums, doing different things, trying different things, clicking on everything, going back, and I could not figure out why the other museum wasn't unlocking for me, and it's because I failed to read one of the walls at the previous museum I was just at. But once again, uh, when you go into both museums, a metric ton of lore uh, is here. So click everything, click the pictures, click everything. It's so much good stuff. Grace's notebook and you find notes whereas Gabe has a recorder Grace has a notebook and can read all her notes which I thought was actually a cool little aspect I don't think I've ever noticed that in any of my other playthroughs I just happened to be so lost on this one that I was clicking on things to see if I was missing something somewhere so I thought this was actually really cool I am 90% certain. I think this is the first time I have ever noticed you can go through and actually read through Grace's notebook. Just keep missing that wall. <laughs> me going back and forth between the museums trying to figure out what I missed. It's good to note that when you go back there that silver heart is there because it'll come into play a little bit later. And then finally spotting the wall and checking everything. I will say, um, I did discover what I believe to be a potential bug. Um, there is a point where Grace clicks on the water, <coughs> uh, where the cross is out there. Uh, if you click it twice, it locked up for me 100% of the time. Like, I tried four or five times 
just to see if something else would happen after I clicked the water a second time, other than it locking up, and it locked up every time. So there's the diaries that you need to read. And then when you go up to her, you'll find out more information. And there you go. The other museum to the north is unlocked, and this guy here proves to be very valuable, and he's also very cool. He, uh, he lets you basically stroll through the museum and gather more information, even though the museum is technically closed. Um, he lets you do it anyway. And it's cool because Grace actually kind of pays him back uh, because you find out how interested he is in trying to finish a certain specific musical piece that Grace finds the missing pieces to the play. At least in this one, uh, unlike in Gabriel Knight 1, the people that are reached out to don't end up dead like they did in Gabriel Knight 1. Now you'll notice that the lilies are open, and uh, you are given one by the priest. And if you recall, they talk about how lilies are important. So if you go out to the water, place a lily in the water, you'll get a vision. Now if you try to click it again, it locked up for me every time. And this is a diary piece that uh, the previous guy that you just talked to on the phone his father was one of the few people to see it, uh, but swore to never pass it on to anyone. Uh, but Grace ends up convincing him to fax it over to him, so he has a copy of it. And what does she do? She shares it. <laughs> All right, we are now in chapter five. And uh, Grace is about to enjoy some company. I wonder where that pendant that you see Gabe wearing, since they actually apparently made a physical copy of it. I wonder where that pendant ended up. I wonder if that ended up with Jane after everything happened with Sierra. It seems like the most fitting place. But I do wonder, like, when Sierra closed, like, how much of that stuff that so many of us would have enjoyed collecting, like the posters they probably had, stuff like that around the office. Um, that just ended up in the trash. Like how much of that would have actually been so great for fans to get a hold of if no one else wanted it. Now this guy. This guy, I wish Gabe would have killed. <laughs> I really wish Gabe would have done something to this guy. Ugh. So now, knowing that we are going to that kennel, I'm going to buy some sausage from her, because it's probably going to be used somewhere in this kennel. Now, it's interesting they talk about here that the wolves were shipped off elsewhere. Uh, but my initial impression, even when I when I first played this, and even when I played it again, because I'd totally forgotten that they were shipped off, my impression was that they were devoured by the tiger in the cage. Like, they were probably killed and eaten by these exotic wild animals because there was a tag, and that seems to indicate like you know there's their tags they were probably killed and then fed to these animals but that's not the case apparently they were shipped off to elsewhere um which seems way more risky that you'd be shipping off wolves and someone else wouldn't be aware of it versus okay you smuggled him into this horrible person's uh shelter thing and he would just use it as meat to feed these other more exotic predator animals like a tiger. 
Now, this might be me, but I would never invite someone into my room that I've only met a few times while I was sitting in the tub to discuss things uh, while chugging down a beverage as well, no less. Um, it just seems like a <laughs> odd behavior, but that's Europeans, uh, probably way more comfortable with their bodies. Uh, just seemed like a odd behavior to be like, yeah, no, you know, I'm in the tub. Come on in. Let's talk. And just like every Sierra game, pick up everything that isn't nailed down. Because it's either going to give you a description or it's going to let you pick it up. Now with the information you've learned, with the the wolf tags, the guy at the zoo suddenly confesses that, yes, he quote-unquote let the wolves escape um, as a part of a cover-up to basically do some stuff and that they were actually taken away. So this part, I was literally just wandering around nonstop. Like I ended up doing circles I don't even know how many times before I actually ended up tracking the footprints correctly, where you go into the thorn bush, then into the cave, and then you light the lantern, and you make a very, very horrifying secret. Or you discover, I should say, a horrifying secret. There are dead bodies all over there. And there is someone feasting on those dead bodies. And it's none other than the guy who hates Gabe. And he goes in and claims that, hey, you know, he, there's dead bodies there, but he hasn't seen anything else. So he says, well, if it's true, we have to go hunt him and put him down. And the two of you eventually end up separated. And of course, the wolf ends up after you. Now, there are a number of times where I died here. Uh, just like that. <laughs> and I did edit out uh, a bunch of them. But I... <laughs> died again. Um, but I would say I probably died about 10 times. Uh, before I actually found the correct path. And it's interesting, like, you can make it all the way back to the house, but the house isn't the safe place. It feels like the house should be the safe place, but you need to actually lure the wolf into a specific area um, where your good, attractive friend will show up with a rifle. And uh, you would think he would shoot it, but he doesn't. He says he can't, and he tosses the gun to you, claiming, you know, because he knows who it is and, you know, he's a good friend, whatever but tosses it to K, but it's more like the alpha can't hurt the beta, which probably means he turned him. And we switch to chapter six now. Uh, and this is uh, the opera. So first, Grace has to go through. She has this thing where she learns way more about what is going on. Oh, and there's the uh, pigeon thing. So first you need to get breadcrumbs to lure the pigeon inside, and then you get the pigeon to come inside, and uh, that's when Grace captures it. But um, Grace is now, s which is weird, because technically I think it's Gabe who has the dream, but somehow Grace knows it. But she now knows all the locations of where all the parts of the play have been hidden at the museum. So there's the bread, and now we need something to catch it, which we don't have. But if you go back, you can get a towel from the foot of the bed, and then go back. And this very docile pigeon just allows Grace to capture it and put it inside her jacket. So when you go here, you see that people have offered up like a, um, a material sacrifice uh, for a blessing. And often it's like a metal arm or something like that. Like whatever needs to be cured, you bring a symbol of that. 
And the psychic does mention uh, about Gabriel's heart. And then we did see that kid stand on the chair or whatever, and it's important to remember the chair. So what you have to do is essentially go through the museum and in areas where there's a guard, you can wait for them to leave. Um, and you can also distract the guard because with that one chair, you can do something to make them leave and think that like the kid peed on it or something like that. And then you're supposed to release the pigeon in this section to make this guard leave. And then so he goes after the pigeon which gives Grace the opportunity to take the next part of the play. So you go back, look at the heart. And then you ask her about the heart. She says, is it, for, is it to save Gabe? You say, yeah. You can go back and claim the heart for yourself because now you can use that as a token as to what needs to be saved for Gabe, which is his poor old heart before he turns to the dark side. This part took me a few tries to actually get right as to what to do. I see she keeps kneeling. But what you have to do is open the door, so apparently a... or you go pray, then open the door and then a st strong breeze will knock out the candles and you can get the heart, if you will. Now, here we are a couple months later, I think it says, and it's the opera. And this is by far my least favorite part of the game. Not only Grace's portion of like running or managing the opera to get it all going and stuff like that, um, which I think is a cool aspect because, you know, that's what the whole curing the lycanthropy is about. Uh, but there are just parts of it that I didn't care for. For example, you have to find a spot because you invite, you invite um, Peter van Glauer uh, to this play. And it says, oh, you know, I should seat him in the best seat in the house. Well, you can just walk through and you can find where the best seat of the house is. And you can even look at the map and go, oh, that's clearly the best seat of the house. But you have to do a certain sequence. So there's the best seat of the house. She even says, oh, this is probably the best seat in the house. But that's not enough. Because even though you tried to turn on this light and says, oh, I need to find out where to sit him first. So there's just a number of things that, I don't know. I just didn't care for this part. And then um, down in that section where Grace just was a second ago, um, as Gabe, when here, where Gabe becomes a werewolf, spoiler alert, um, uh, like f shutting the right door so that the werewolf has one way to go. Uh, I literally did it so there's a number of things like when Gabe comes through that grate and stuff like that because that's how he'll eventually escape from the room he's locked in uh, another spoiler alert um, that you have to prevent uh, Van Glauer from escaping from so you need to shut those doors to make sure he can't go through that or any of the other exits that would let him get out and I did that and I made a path straight to the furnace but because I was technically ahead of where he was at, but I left another door open so he could technically go into the furnace and then I could go behind him. He stops. And I literally, it's trimmed out from here, but I think I waited over a half an hour to see if he would move. Like he didn't even go back and forth between other rooms in this long hallway that he was in, that he had been trapped in. He just literally stayed in one spot. And uh, it took a number of tries, which I think I trimmed out of the video before I finally discovered the correct pattern uh, to shut the door or shut the doors in. I don't know if there is more than one pattern, but I could swear I tried like 5,000 different patterns. He either got out before I could close those specific doors, or if I did a different type of pattern, he would run away or I would get shot. And the times that where Gabe would get shot as a wolf, uh, 
I couldn't even tell why he was being shot. So I'm sure it's because I'm locking it in a specific pattern that basically makes it a no-win. So they just do it as a uh, bang your shot. Like if I trap the wolf with no way to the furnace, probably get shot for that. But I always tried to keep the door to the furnace that leads to the furnace, the area, open. But that part of the game was a nightmare. But make sure you turn on the furnace as grace. Uh, not only to warm the place, but you're going to need it when... Uh, spoiler alert, when Gabe is a werewolf and uh, needs the other wolf to get pushed in there. And then uh, Grace gives the bad news that she learns that the chandeliers, the the opera house that it's at, is actually a reconstruction of the original. The original was destroyed during the war, so the the replica version of this opera house is actually smaller. So not all the things align correctly, but it should work. And so uh, Grace has to tie the rope and make a private sign there to make sure no one interferes. In the meantime, Gabe finds this grate, and that's how he can get out. And when he does, he pops the other grate open, which I think I walk away, or I did it, yeah, the first time I tried to put the grate back and it doesn't fit. Because I was thinking, I remember having played this a number of times in the past, that I need to basically go through here. And I thought, oh, wait, I wonder if Gabe can actually close the grate so I don't have to worry about closing the door to this grate so the wolf can't get out. Nope. So, and one of the things, there is a roll of tape there that is almost virtually impossible to see. But you have to make sure you get the tape first before you go in here to basically silence the guy. So you powder the room, powder the mirror first, I should say, so he can't see you coming up, and then you use the tape on him. And then there's this opera scene. And it's interesting, because the opera scene actually, despite Gabe being dressed up and being out there, um, when you read about the opera, it talks about how the villagers surrounded the guy and a werewolf appeared uh, and that's literally what happens in the play uh, it all plays out exactly how it should be and the music starts and van glauer starts feeling the effects and he goes into panic mode and now we are in the um, basement area with the doors and gabe can is smart enough as a wolf to be able to close the doors with his nose if you do close the door um, you can't reopen it, just know that. So any door you close cannot be reopened. And already I've, there's already been like four, three or four, where Gabe gets shot, so. And the red wolf is, or the red dot is the Van Glauer, so. He's the one that you need to basically lure and trap and head to the furnace. My hatred of this part of the game is immense. See, for example, I've got him trapped in that room where he can't go anywhere except towards either the furnace or towards where I'm at. But he just stays in that room right there. Literally no other way but down and then towards the other room, then down or down towards me. And he just stays right there there, the whole plank in time. So even though I'm running around back and forth, like trying to trigger his scent to see if it comes this way, I finally end up just restoring and redoing it and trying a few different things. And the, the other odd thing is the room that is the furnace, you can't actually go into it as Gabe until the other wolf has gone in first. So he has to go in first, just like he is now, where we can now actually see it happen. And so as the wolf, you signal to Grace to open up the furnace thing, and she does it, and you have to time it just right. As soon as that wolf starts to jump, you have to click on him, and that'll push him into the fire. 
and that's where we reach pretty much the end of the game. Uh, with Fanglower destroyed, Gabe is cured of his lycanthropy, and we reach the very, very end of the game. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I didn't talk as much as I normally do because the game has so much story. I just highly recommend just watching all six chapters at, at a normal speed. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed it, or if you enjoyed anything I've done here, please click like and subscribe. And remember, that's the only way to save yourself from lycanthropy. Thanks, and hopefully you come back and check out the other stuff I've done. Or check out the other stuff maybe you haven't already seen yet. And uh, enjoy this channel. Alright, bye.